Stomach gone bubble. Stomach gone bubble. Stomach gone bubble. <laughs> Stomach gone bubble. <laughs> That's what it sounds like too. <laughs> Jeez. Do not eat dragon fruit. The yellow one, you guys. Yo. <laughs> see? You see? You ma, you see what she just did, right, ma? <laughs> It's you. It be you. It be just, you. Just get up and dance. It be you, man. I don't it, know what you're talking about. I tapped your shoulder. Nah. It be you. Episode number four, baby. How you feeling? Uh, uh, what's your name? No, you know why I said that though? Because I always be wanting to say Juke, and nobody, nobody knows you as Juke. They know you as J Monet, but I call you Juke. Yeah. So I was about to say, I caught myself. How okay. you feeling, babe? Feeling good. Feeling good. How are you feeling tonight? I'm baby? feeling energized. I'm feeling optimistic. I'm mm-hmm. feeling very, very blessed. The baby shower went well. Oh yes. It Family came out, flew out, drove out, all of the above. So I, we're just coming back from that. So I'm feeling great. I'm, I don't know. I'm wore out still, but it's okay. I'm, I'm here. Yes. We are here. Because last time you came from me, so I'm not going to question you. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to question you being out of nothing. You ain't going to get me twice. It's okay. I still love you. I love you. I love you. <laughs> too. About you girl. Uh, <laughs> hey, you. We are officially rolling, by the way. All right, let's jump right into it. First of all, before we get started, please, please, please smash that subscribe button. We need you guys to help us out in this algorithm. Get us pushed out. Like and push comment. Your thoughts throughout as we go. As we go, like and comment. Comment and like. Yes. Subscribe, send it to your friends, send it to your boyfriends, send it to your All husband, send it to your wife, send it to your girlfriend, send it to your daughter, oh. send it to your sister, oh. send it to your auntie, yeah. send it to yeah. your grandma, yeah. send it to you, send it to you. Yeah. yeah. That's all I got. Okay. That's you got all anything I have. you want to say? Okay. You, 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 yeah, okay. <laughs> well, let's we can get into these topics then. Let's jump right into it, man. Here, put your face in that. I mean, Ma, she did. <laughs> hey, Ma. <laughs> Hey, Ma, you see what she be doing? Anyways, I'm talking it about don't the iPad, be me. Nasty. It don't be me. Talking it don't about be me. IPad All right. Nasty. They always say it's the quiet ones. It's the quiet ones. So on the last episode, you guys weighed in, and I guess it's kind of like, you know, you guys like that. That we talk about things that are something that's on your mind or something you want to hear us talk about. So we got some more today. Yes. For tonight. Yes, yes. So, when is a good time to introduce your kid or kids to your new partner? Hmm. That's a good one. Yes, it is. I honestly feel like you got to be super intentional and super mindful with that. Because people be weirdos. Yes. You know what I'm saying? A lot of the times, I, and it's ugly because I, I know this, I have a story. And um, I'm going to try to keep it as vague as possible because I don't want us to get you know, striked or anything when it comes to, you know, certain words we use. Mm -hmm. But, um, I know somebody who was in a relationship with a guy, right. And she was doing travel and nursing. Um, so she was away from her kids, but she entrusted her boyfriend to stay with her kids while she was doing her, you know, her nursing thing. So let's say she was in doing her nursing in New York, her family's back in LA. I'm just making some place up. You know what I'm saying? So while she was Handling business while she was working, he was staying at home with the kids. Come to find out, oh, this no. man was oh, touching no. another kid and was facing charges for touching that other kid while he's going back and forth dealing with that in court and allegations and this, this, and that. Her daughter then tells her that she was touched by him as well. Oh my goodness. Now, this is where I don't like oh. when it comes to the situation. She's one of those parents that didn't believe the daughter. Uh. And I feel like when, first of all, when your child or any any child, anybody in general tells you they've been essayed, 
you got to take that seriously. You know what I'm saying? And you can't be so digmatized or so in love that you not hearing your child. Because that's first case first. We get, we need to protect our children. And as soon as you're not doing that, you you're fit, you failed it as, as not only as a parent, but this person is going to be scarred for the rest of their life. Okay. So um, long story short, that whole thing happened. They ended up getting prosecuted or whatever. But I say all that to say we got to be careful with who we bring our children around. It's not just men predators, male predators. It's female predators as well. So when is a good time? I would say after, I feel like you got to kind of really feel like you know this person. Mm-hmm. It's not how it was like when you just know somebody inside and out. You know what I'm saying? Even even if you feel as though like you think you know them, you might need to do that background check. You might got to put that name inside that, inside that search and make sure they don't have any prior, you know what I'm saying? Any prior convictions or any type of essays or any type of things like that on that record you know what i'm saying especially if you got a little girl you need to you know do your due diligence um but i feel like just seeing how they are around your children you know what i'm saying just without before spending the night and all of that stuff just seeing how they interact like do they are they able to have respectable boundaries like example when i was with my ex um she had a daughter or whatever and i was very mindful with especially in the beginning mind you it was a six-year relationship but i was very mindful in the beginning especially about how she would like sit on my lap or jump on me or whatever the case may be i was like listen uh you know i love you and all that but you you're a little you're a little, you're a little girl so you got to carry yourself as such you know what i'm saying you can't just be jumping on these men on these men and sitting on their laps and doing all of that stuff so i kind of was instilling that into into her you know what i'm saying and you know as time goes on and years go by and i'm literally watching you grow up and helping you along the way you know, you we are able to, you know, sit on my lap and not only am I comfortable now, but now, you know, the child feels as though I know that you're going to protect me. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's important. And I feel like um, I'm getting a little long, <clears throat> long winded with my answer. But to say when I just feel like you got to kind of let do your due diligence and let your energy kind of guide you and, and have your discernment on point. Um, before you do that, yeah. yeah, that's my answer. Just to piggyback of what you said about not listening to people that you know talk about essay and stuff like that, I feel like that's why it's a stigma now to why people don't say anything. You don't believe me, so who else would? Yeah. Especially when you're someone close to them. So I can only imagine what that baby you know went through or was going through or whatever. Um, yeah. so back to the question. <clears throat> I feel like it's not about, it's not a time thing. Like, just like, how long before you get in a relationship? How long before you get married? How long before you propose? I just feel like that's just time stamps. That's unrealistic. Um, <clears throat> so I don't, I won't necessarily say a time. I more so put it as when you learn a person or You know how a person will react or like you've seen this person in different settings, angry, tired, frustrated, broke, you know, stuff like that. And if they have kids, how they treat their kids, because if that came from them and they're mistreating them, you can only imagine what they do to yours or, you know, it's come their child came from them and they put them up here like they matter most. Imagine what they do for you, especially when y'all are building something. So, um, learning a person, seeing those different type of things. And then what a lot of people don't realize is like the whole, you didn't listen to your kid. Your kid will tell you like the way they are around them. If they come around them, they're shy all the time. Something's not connected between the two. And when I say how I knew that it was okay, it was, and maybe a week or a couple of days before Braylon's birthday, first time they met. And when I say Braylon ditched me <laughs> the first day, like Braylon's always on the hip. That's twin. Like we, we like this. And the first day they hung out, he was like, can I ride with Trey? Mm-hmm. That's my guy. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Double back. Excuse me. What, sir? What did you mm-hmm. say? And I'm just sitting in my car lonely, headed back to the house like, mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so like your kids will tell you too 
So I just feel like it's a lot of stuff is you have to pay attention to as also listening to your children because they know. Mm-hmm. So I won't put a time on it though, but that's that makes sense though. That's yeah. that's that's a good um it's just like to get a long winded, but to help my point <clears throat> prior to you, um Braylon would uh I more say like a hi and sit next to me. Hello, and just be like under me, mm-hmm. like the entire time. Like disconnect. Like yeah, he like, wasn't really into. Like I tolerate you mm-hmm. because of my mom, or you know something like that. And it was just like all that together was just like this is not for me, because at the end of the day, me and my child is a package deal. So if he's not for you, I'm not for you. But this one, to this day, I gotta go tell daddy. Mm-hmm. Hold on, mommy, let me tell. Sir, I'm talking to you. I'm gonna go tell daddy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I don't matter for real. I'm just here for food and cuddles sometimes. That's my guy. <laughs> this is the main man right here. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's you. Listen, and another thing is our relationship. You can't even like if we if it's all of us outside. It's me, Junior, you, and Braylon. You couldn't tell who came out of my balls and who didn't. Like all, I treat all my kids the same. Her kid, her child is my child, and vice versa. Like, and I feel like that's another thing. Like when a lot of uh, especially men, like come into your life and they come into your life and you got children if they not like willing to take initiative like like hey especially like at past the talking phase i'm not talking about the talking phase i'm talking about like after like hey we're in a relationship your shit becomes my shit like yeah you know, yeah yeah you know your responsibilities become my responsibilities and i feel like um especially when it comes to raising children i can't you can't go into the situation like hey that's your child because now it's like, oh, well, if that's if you're not coming to it with the same amount of uh, energy that I'm coming at it with, what you got going on behind closed doors? Like, cause you wouldn't, you know, talk to your daughter like that or do nothing to your daughter or your son or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it's just mm-hmm. like, um, don't do it to mine. So that's that on that. Yeah, and we definitely work together on that. Like when something's decided by me, hey, what did mommy say? And it's just like we're a team, and it's not like you don't need to do that or you do 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 do. It's n- it's none of that. It's harmony with the parents. Like his and mine, we don't even have that. It's ours all the time. It doesn't even, like I made joke like crack little jokes like he or something. He act like that or you know something like that. But other than that, we're a team all the time. Yeah. Shout so. out to Jenny Boom for that question. Yeah, Jenny. How do you guys feel about poly relationships? Oh, I'm so happy bum, you get to go first. Bum, bum. <laughs> I'm so happy you get to go first. <laughs> get the, get the, get the, get the, How do you feel about it? Out of my face. Out of my face. Out of my face. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. Is this thing on? Mm-hmm. Um. I don't feel a way about private relationships because you love who you love. You do what you do. You're grown. I wouldn't, me personally. I mean, maybe poly relationships work for some people, but like I just don't feel like it works for me because like when I'm in tune with you, I can't entertain other things because like I'm one of those people that put everything into the person that I'm talking to. So if it was ever a third me, somebody gonna be like, I'm leaving anyway, because it's just like I like I put all of me into you. What I am with the person, but now some people, part of me, some of me, most of me, feels like poly relationships are a thing because there's something missing within one or another person. So it's okay to you feel like you can have multiple because like this girl can really cook and clean, and this girl is the one that always puts it down in the bedroom. This one's really smart. This one makes me laugh. Like it's, I feel like people that try that type of stuff or you know into that type of stuff feel like they can't find it in one person so they have multiples and try to make it work and you know things like that or some people have seen the poly situation is really just kink in the bedroom it's not really anything serious or you know something like that so that's just really my take on it i just feel like they do it or into it because they feel like they can't find all those things in one person or like to jump back to 
<clears throat> last episode doing everything you want but the trash in the bed where that's something that could be taught and you can grow with that person but some people don't have that patience or that will to be like i know i'm just gonna go find it with someone else and we're gonna all agree mm-hmm. so that's how i kind of look at it no i get it I get it. Uh, I mean, me personally, you know, I was in a poly relationship, so I feel like I have a different point. <laughs> I feel like I have a different point of view than you. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? I feel like poly is beautiful when everybody is one transparent, honest, and selfless. I feel like you can love more than one person. Mm-hmm. I feel like you can. Um, I feel like the thing about it is. When there's an ego involved, people have this sense of entitlement or the sense of like, me, 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 me. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like when you love somebody, it's not really about you. It's about, well, what do you need? What do you want? How can I please you? And um, I do feel what you were saying to a certain extent. Like, um, some people feel like something is lacking in another person. And I feel like that could be to a certain extent, but I feel like also it's it's nothing wrong with that because nobody's nobody's perfect to a certain extent. Like everybody can, you know, do better in certain areas. You know what I'm saying? So I just feel like if it was something that was talked about, it was something agreed upon, if it was something that was understood, like, hey, if we had another woman in this house to help help with these kids, if and she is able to understand, like, hey, we all love each other. Like it doesn't even have to be like a, oh, it's y'all situation and I'm just here, or it's my situation and she's just here, or whatever. We all had to love each other with the same amount, like of love that I have for you, that you have for me, and then that other person has. You know what I'm saying? It's never, a, it shouldn't be a disconnect. And when there's any jealousy inserted, when there's any doubt inserted, and that's when it all fumbles and all crumbles and falls apart mm-hmm. because that somebody is oh. You spent more time with her or, oh, y'all, like, even me, like, as the man, I can get jealous of y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, y'all seem like y'all always want to go out, but don't ask if I, you know what I'm saying, if I want to go. Now, I, that, that all comes back to insecurities, though. Because if it's like, hey, I know you love me. I know she loves me. Y'all having a good time. Like, y'all going to the mall. Y'all going to the club. Y'all going to the park. Whatever. A, a concert. I should just let y'all have y'all time. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like certain people can't handle that. And certain people... You know, it's not for them. And I think if you're somebody that feels like I just want my one person to yourself, that's okay if that's what you're into. But I feel like also if not saying you per se, but I'm just saying don't knock nothing until you try it. Oh, and if it doesn't work, and if it, huh? You <laughs> said you're not talking to me. Good job. Oh yeah, I'm not. I'm just, it's, I'm, we're talking to our to <laughs> yeah. our we're talking to our family on on oh, yes. our bed talk family. Yes, yes, we you are. Know, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know, I feel like no knocking it until you try it. Be honest, be upfront, be truthful, be selfless, and see how it goes. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. That's my take on it. So, Mr. Prada, how did you go from three, you know, two women, three women to a one woman man? <laughs> me, no, me personally, that last poly relationship, man, that shit was a lot, a lot of work. And mm-hmm. I felt like one woman, keeping one woman mentally, emotionally, sexually satisfied is already hard. Mm-hmm. So to add two, I like, listen, man, look. <laughs> <laughs> got me fucked up. Y'all motherfuckers is crazy. I'm cool. I'm gonna, y'all got me getting more grades faster than I normally was getting my grades. No. Um, but no, uh all jokes aside, I, I was lucky enough to find somebody that really, you know, put me in a space, in a mental space where I just didn't feel like anybody else would be an additive. You know what I'm saying? I felt like I was completed. And to go back what you were to what you were saying about Oh, some people feel like, oh, this one can cook, but this one is freakier, or this person is smarter, but this one is more artistic. Like, I get that, because when I was in my last relationship, that was a poly relationship, it was like, you know, one person was a little bit more, you know, this than the other one, another one was a little bit more of that than the other one, so, and them two together kind of made it a whole thing, but, you know, I found, I found this one, and 
She just did everything right. Everything right. Did everything right. Y'all. Everything right. She did everything right. Hey, everything right. She did. Shout out to Amy, man, yeah, with Amy. that question. That was a great question. Thank you. Yes, Appreciate you. Yes, she definitely got an insight into everything. Yes. Because, yes. like, originally when people, you know, find out that you're in a poly relationship, are you sure he's done? Are you sure he doesn't miss it? Are you sure? And those questions would come out and I'd be like, I'm sure. <laughs> Ma, get, get your daughter, Ma. <laughs> what's the next question, man? What's, what's, what's going on? You breathing through this motherfucker. Put your put your put your face in it. <laughs> ma. <laughs> hey Ma, you get your daughter. Get your daughter. Get yum, your yum. daughter. Get your daughter, man. Hit that subscribe button. <laughs> like, comment. Stay tuned. Tell me how y'all feeling so far. <clears throat> oh, this is a good one. A discussion that y'all feel is important to have prior to marriage. Mm. You know, everybody has their pet peeves and their things like that they can't go without or the things that, you know what I'm saying? Like, could have, like, example, right? I feel like we had this conversation and I was like, by the time we like 40, 50, whatever, I feel like we, we should, we should have like, I don't know, like a, like an orgy or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, like some some next level extra shit like like <laughs> why are you looking at me no i'm just saying but if i had just popped out at the marriage five ten years from now and just said hey i want to do some off the wall uh fantasy type shit you're gonna be like nigga why the fuck you know what i'm saying i feel like if you talk about it before it's kind of like okay well we need to figure out if this is going to be something that I can deliver or that I'm not going to deliver on or it's going to be a problem in the future. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Or even financial stuff like, hey, say, what are we going to do when our taxes come? Are we combining them and doing a business venture? Are we doing, like, you know what I'm saying? Just a different, like, stipulations, like the prenup conversation. I was talking to my dad and he was like, you know, how he feels about if a woman doesn't uh, sign a prenup, he wouldn't want to get married, basically. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. not, I don't really have that, that take, but you might, you know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. might have that conversation. You might want that conversation. Like, look, mm -hmm. financial questions that are really imperative to you, sexual questions or sexual things that you have, even like, um, some guys who, you know, might, you know, dibble and dabble, like, Dibble and dabble and what? <laughs> dibble, what we're dibbling and dabbling in? Like, all right, so example, right? <laughs> Y'all, 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 y'all. <laughs> Listen. Listening. <laughs> y'all, y'all. <laughs> uh, listen. Okay, sorry. Up, up front about everything. Everything. Sir. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Don't let your woman find out that you dibble and dabble. <laughs> Yeah, I'm done with you. Listen. <laughs> After the marriage to find out. Woo. That would be crazy. What? <laughs> but that's the but that's a conversation people don't have though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like you you know, it's twenty twenty four. Keep it out. Oh y'all. <laughs> um, I, I think that's that's about it for me. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. No. It's fast. It's getting close to my bedtime. I get goofy. <laughs> All right. So, yes, monetary things, whether not even just taxes and things like that. If I fall off, like to know that you're going to be there, like when I'm, when you're 80 and I'm 20. Or, you know, 25 and 75. Like, can you handle those type of situations? Mm -hmm. Like, because sometimes you don't see that until after you're married. Mm -hmm. So it's like good to know, can you handle those situations? Or is it going to be like, I can't do this with you. And it's something so easy to go get a divorce over. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that. When it comes to finances, just anything in general. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, <clears throat> having that discussion of, Separate bank accounts, my bank account, your bank account. Do we share one? Do we have a savings where we put in a certain amount? Are we putting something together for the kids? You know, kind of, you know, that whole thing for his finances is a thing in itself. 
now we're to this sexual point you were talking about. You don't got to hit on my point. No, 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 you no, can no, make no, your no, own no. point. Shush, shush, shush. I got points within your points. Then I got my points. Why you got to put your hands on me, though? I that felt it like it was mean. It wasn't mean. I'm never mean. You when doink am, me. When am I mean? Just now. I'm sorry. I think I'm spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the question. Um, I just feel like you should talk about some things that you're nervous about sexually. Things that you may want to try someday. Things that you fantasize about. Things that you've seen and may want to try. Like those type of conversations. Because like you said, coming to that point after marriage, you're just like, hey, I think I just want to. Try another woman in the bedroom. And you're just like, what? Mm-hmm. Or either, hey, let's go to a swingers club. Or, hey, you know, you never know what the situation may be because it depends on the relationship. But, like, I just feel like some of those deal breakers for a sex, like, you're never going to do this. Or, I don't feel like I could ever do that. But I have seen this and I'd like to. Not right now. I'm not ready. Mm-hmm. But it's just a conversation to have. Um, because you voiced to me, too, that you, you know, you might want to, you know. Introduce a woman into the bedroom. And you get, can't get it. It. you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Now I just know that one day you might, you know. I might. You might want to. Might. Yeah. Speak strong might. But hey, that's a conversation that we have while we're still engaged, you know, things like that. Those type of conversations, regardless if to some other, to other people, it's just like, oh my God. But it, it feels good that I know I won't be blindsided one day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Oh, that just brought it to my attention. Thank you. Discussing your deal breakers. Like, that's a big thing. Like, I've told you before, I don't do this. I don't do this. I don't do this. This is one way to lose me. Like, I may still be here, excuse me, and try to fight for our relationship, but this is one way to lose me. So, I feel like revisiting deal breakers is very important in a marriage because Everyone has different things that just push them Mm -hmm. too far, push them to where they're just like, fuck, now I'm stuck in a marriage or now, you know, this is that. Like, so to know a person's deal breaker and you still do that, that's on you at that point. But having that discussion before marriage about your deal breakers is very important. Yeah, I agree. That was a good one, though. Who's that from? Uh, Cherish. Cherish. Shout out to Cherish. Shout out to Cherish. The fuck I couldn't. I got choked up with my own words. Shout out to Cherish, man. I don't know what the hell I started saying, and it just got. A bad, bad, baluba. Cherish. We need you. Smash that subscribe button before you do anything else. Hit that like button. Drop a comment below. For you do anything else. Yo, music for everything. <laughs> Jingles for days. Hey, 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 find a question of the day. What hey, hey, you hey, got hey, to say? Oh, hey, 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 find a question of the day. Ba-da, what ba-da, do you got to say? <laughs> hey, yo, I'm asleep. <laughs> Dear Bed Talk, I have three children with three different baby fathers. I've been on dating apps and have been trying my luck in the dating scene, but it seems like once men stay for a certain amount of time, and I think we're getting somewhere, they either go ghost or start acting weird. I'm very independent and don't ask them for anything except honesty, loyalty, and transparency. Most of the men that I talk to have kids as well, so I don't know what the problem is. Any advice? And they ask to stay anonymous. Okay, first things first to just for women in general to date with children is already hard i had one and it was just like it was the end of the world like it but i also feel like that's also has a lot to do with your character as well because even though it was eh, trying to date people when i had a son it was still like it was like it wasn't happening it was still things that was in place. I was still dating and things like that. It's just like, maybe not the people you necessarily want, but you know, you still get dates and things like that, but that's just because people see my character, you know, things like that. So with that being said to have three. And the first question people ask, if you got multiple kids, are they all with the same dad? Like, Mm -hmm. it's like an automatic, like, okay, you didn't, 
pushed out three babies. You'd have been in three different dudes and ain't none of them working or all of them left or ain't none of them around. Like, was it a one night stand and people start looking at you as a person? Because, like, it just be one of those situations where you have long term relationships and a kid comes out of it. But, like, to, to for you to say, yeah, I got three kids, they all by the same daddy, you say no. And then when you have to break it down, it's like automatically like, damn. Mm-hmm. Mm. Or it could have just been, you know, a little freaky naughty and, you know, not protecting yourself or not, you know, having protection or things like that. And the kids just came. Like, it could be a lot of different situations as to why it's like that. So, <clears throat> already coming into it with three different fathers is just like a lot of people will look at you like who because like keep in mind i have just i had just braylon Mm -hmm. that was it and one kid was an issue for a lot of people so imagine three because not only is it three children that they have to be willing to accept they also have to accept three different men three different personalities three different mindsets three different you may have one that's not there one that's too overactive popping up and one is just damn crazy so it's just like they have to be willing to want to deal with all that as well Mm -hmm. so if things are going good and then they start being weird or something like that what was the situation surrounding it like do you have i won't say bad children but more so out of control like, you know, they're not listening to you. You know, hey, man, don't do that. You know, your mom wouldn't want you to do that. Shut up, nigga. You ain't my daddy. <laughs> you know, like, this. Uh, that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm out. Like, that, I'm that, head out. <laughs> that could be a lot to take into consideration. <laughs> like, dang, if I deal with you, like, I like you. But, like. Mm-hmm. Your kids don't have no respect. They don't have mm-hmm. no nothing. And I'm coming in. I'd be liable. To, <clears throat> mm-hmm. You know, so it's just like some people don't even want to put themselves in that situation. It could be a situation one of the baby fathers, you know, like my prior relationship and dealing with, you know, Bray's dad. It was it was a lot, honestly. Um, and basically told me like, hey, I'm going to sit out, sit this one out or whatever, because you got to deal with that. And it's just but like, who said that? I'm saying that person that should not be dancing yes. that about brave that. Yes. Oh, he said I'm gonna sit this out. Yeah. Oh, so he's a bitch. So. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So after like everything, <laughs> everything that I was going through was just like you're supposed to, you know. By this time we've been together a while. I say that too. So by this point, you're supposed to be my partner, and I'm like stressing and going through all of this, and it's just like I'm gonna sit back. You know, you do what you want to do. Da, 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 da. So like some people just. Not built for parents or kids or you know stuff that's not de- like not theirs. So that could be something else that happened in the situation. Like what's surrounding or what happened before they went ghost or started acting weird. Some people don't feel like they don't have to deal with it or they won't deal with it. That could be a deal breaker for a lot of people. Like I'll accept the fact that you have kids, but what they're doing, I, I'm not gonna tolerate. And then I can't discipline or I can't fix it because at the end of the day, we just really met. We're just dating. I can't. Mm-hmm. So they just remove themselves from the situation. All right. Um, really big with your character, too. Like some people pay attention to if you're a doll duck, your kid ain't got no haircut or your daughter's hair is not done, but you look OK. They automatically looking at you sideways like mm-hmm. you don't even care about your kids. What I'm going to sit here for. Right. So it just depends on the person, and I really think it has a lot to do with character, you know. And then now just dating with a child is just hard for anyone, but, you know, that's just my take on that yeah. question there. Oh, for sure, for sure. I feel like as a man, dealing with a woman that has more than two kids, dealing with a woman that has more than one kid, <laughs> even though I got two kids, prior like when i like example when i first met you before i even met you let's talk about before i even met you right mm-hmm. it was somebody i was talking to and <clears throat> she had two kids same baby fathers though you know what i'm saying um and another one i saw you two different women two similar scenarios 
and I'll tell you what was different about you. Okay. Okay. So, woman A, two kids, same baby father. Woman B, two kids, two different baby fathers, right? The thing that was not granted, those two relationships did not work because of the kids or the baby fathers. But I'm just giving you, from a man's point of view, my thoughts with that, mm -hmm. right? So, the one that had the same baby father, I feel as though the, the children were well kept. Everything was fine. All that, all that, all that was cool. But I was just thinking, like bringing on two more kids with my two kids. Now that's four kids. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, we have another kid that's five kids. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a lot. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I, and I didn't feel like the relationship gave. We would we could do this together, and I felt like it wasn't those things that would be all on me. Like it, it wasn't like okay, we had these children, and it's like a group effort. It's like no, I'm carrying your weight, their weight, the kids. Like you know what I'm saying? I'm in on top of that, going head to head with their father, and I just didn't feel like I. If I, and looking back at hindsight, if I had a choice, I would probably be like, eh. I don't really feel like it's worth it. You know what I'm saying? And it probably was one of the reasons that, you know, it didn't work out, but it wasn't the reason. Mm -hmm. Women B, two kids, two different baby fathers. I personally feel like she was more... She was more... All right, her energy was a little bit different to where I feel as though I had more of a say-so, I guess you could say, with her children. Mm -hmm. Um, even though I wasn't a hundred percent comfortable to just be like, "Hey, I'm daddy," duh, 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 duh. but I feel as though the way the fathers were, they were less active, I guess you could say, and it was easier for me to kind of, you know, have a little bit more say so. Um, but I also feel as though with that situation, it was the same thing. Like, damn, do I really want to have? another two kids like you know what i'm saying and and i felt like the like she was more of a grinder more of a go getter but the other thing was her her one like her daughter was like way older than her son so like i think her daughter was like 13 which was cool but i also feel like any relationship that a man comes into he kind of wants to mold the children in his image like you know what i mean so i feel like it's like they already kind of set in their ways type time like i'm just here uh, when I met you and Bray, I felt like you had the qualities, one, of a partner. Like, it didn't feel like I was coming into the situation and it was just like, like, it felt like we can raise the children cohesively and have similar morals, similar thought processes. And you as a wife or, or a womanly figure or a motherly figure would let me be the man in that situation. You know what I'm saying? Um, also with um i guess bray's father not saying that he's not active but the fact that i'm here i feel like i have way more influence and I, and, I, and it's a good thing you know what i'm saying because um we see how much growth he's had since i've been around you know what i mean so it's just things like that it's just like why would I want to be with a woman who doesn't let me be the man? Let me be the father. Let me be the father figure. Let me you know, just trust my judgment. And I feel like um, the fact that you did only have one son. I feel like even if you did have two children, I would still choose you. You know what I'm saying? And just be, just because how you are. And it all goes back to character, thought process, mind mindset. Um, uh, what what else? Um, just your essence as a woman, you know what I'm saying? It's just like I think it's a it's a very high lack of femininity in um, relationships, and I feel like a lot of relationships fail. Um, one because men aren't mentally prepared to be fully, um, I guess, mentally and emotionally available for their woman. Because mm -hmm. I feel like me a couple years ago versus me now are two different me's you know what i'm saying i feel like the fact that i'm a little that i'm more mature that i'm able to articulate myself more be more emotionally available is able to bring out certain things in you and comfortability in you that you that you couldn't before with in other relationships mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and also the way you see how i am with 
my kids. It's like, okay, I trust your judgment too. Um, so to, to go back into the whole question, but I feel like it might be something that you're not doing right. And maybe it's about checking yourself and maybe you are lacking where it comes to, you know, as are you affectionate? Are you, are you making it a safe space? Are you make, are, is, is the meal prepared when the, when the, when that said man comes over, when the kid, when the kids are there, does it feel like he's included in daily life or daily you know what i'm saying and if he's and if it's too early for that then maybe the kid shouldn't be even up you know what i'm saying when he's around mm -hmm. or be there when he's around like maybe it should just be getting to know that man until he's comfortable enough to even you know or to even see if he's even worthy of coming around your children mm -hmm. so i don't think the men are not there or leaving because of the children i think it might be something that you got going on yeah, that just jogged something from the question, too, to, like, kind of add to it. She was like, I'm independent and don't ask for anything. Mm -hmm. Like, what if you're not allowing those men to be men? And they're just like, I got, I deal enough. Uh, like, this is women right now. I deal enough with that. I thought you was, might be different. You know, I thought you might be, you know, deeper into your femininity, whatever the case may be. And then that goes back to three different kids with three different fathers. Like, you have to be. Especially if they're not active, that wasn't in there. But um, you have to be everything for them. So with you having to be mom and dad, which I still feel like to this day, no woman can teach any boy how to be a man or any man to be a man or any of that. Because like we're not wired the way they are. We're not even the same structure the way that they are so that's why i'm so thankful for you every day when it comes to braylon because like i'm doing what i could and like braylon was who braylon was <laughs> low-key stressed me out low-key like <laughs> braylon had me finna pull my hair out like and like from then to now having a a male father figure there constantly it just goes to show that the kids need fathers in their lives whether it's like my stepdad and you like being stand-up guys and taking that position or whether you and the dad are together or whatever the case may be like they need that boy or girl like they just really need it so you being too independent could be like <laughs> and when you when you have all right so, I, so this is my thing too right <laughs> if you have one failed relationship one failed baby father one failed engagement it's understandable. Shit happens. Two, it's like, hmm, what's going on here? Why is this pattern repeating? Either it's you or it's the other person. But it also is like, wh how many times have they failed? You know what I'm saying? Their relationships. So that's also another thing. Um, but once you get to number three, God, it's damn. almost 100% you. Damn. It might almost 100% 100, 100 be you. And not say that it's like, you know, nobody deserves to, you know, be abandoned nobody's children you know deserves for their father to, to quit but sometimes relationships are so unbearable and we pick people who we had no business picking in the first place you know yes. so if we are the are the reasons we're putting ourselves in these situations that these failed marriages failed engagements failed relationships one baby mom two baby mom four baby mom five baby dads two baby whatever because we shouldn't have been with that person from the get-go. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it might be time to look at the mirror. I'm something but the man in the mirror. Oh, yeah. I'm nothing to make a change. I'm nothing in a bad If you want to make the world a better place, so then look at yourself and make a change. Facts. You gotta look at yourself, man. Yeah. And on that note, smash that subscribe button. Bow, bow, bow. Drop a like in a comment. Tell us how you felt about this. You could be on the next episode. episode. Yeah, yeah, next yeah. Get out of this. Yeah. We want to hear more than just, oh, I love this. Okay. Drop something down there so we can keep talking about it. Yes. Email, DM us. There's Instagrams, tags here. So yes. just, you know. We're yes. family now. Yes. We've let y'all in the bed. We're yes. here. <laughs> you guys are officially the, a part of the Bed Talk family. Yes, we are. 
So anything like how these people are coming with the confessions, you can stay remain anonymous just like they did. Yes. That's why I'd be like on you know on my story, like any confessions, any topics, anything. You know, people chime in and obviously y'all fuck with us and we fuck with you. So we up here and we in the bed talk doing it. And we did. And we do. And we do. And we did. And did. Did, 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 did. What time is it? Oh, <laughs> we did better than we usually do. Yes. It's not almost 12 o'clock. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so we still got enough time to watch a little movie, cuddle mm-hmm. up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So on that note, we're going to call it a call it a Daniana. Yeah. And don't forget, we don't judge. Oh, yeah. 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 We ain't judging y'all, man. Mm-hmm. And we ain't going to tell you. How? You're not an alpha male. You're a beta male. You think that man want to sit up here and you got three kids and you think he want to sit up? He don't want none of that. that. We not here that. Because what's wrong with you? Why you didn't, we didn't come at you like that? We just like, maybe it's time to look within self. Because sometimes self is the biggest issue. Like, maybe you have a lot of pride. Maybe you have ego. Maybe you have a, I don't need a man. And in society these days, Mm -hmm. that's all that men face. Mm -hmm. Especially, and I hate to say it, especially when it comes to black women. And you know what? Another thing we do is you just trigger something. I'm sorry. We, I can't find a white podcast or a Mexican podcast or a Spanish podcast or a uh, uh, Asian podcast and they're sitting and, and talking about how their men ain't shit. We the only ones doing that. Yeah. And we got to stop it because what it's doing is putting a stigmata that doesn't exist. Mm-hmm. And you're going into your next relationship with this false um, ideology of what a man is supposed to be or a black man is supposed to be. And what all you're doing is taking people's negative you know, their their negative experiences and making it a broad experience, but it's not. Yep. Everybody isn't going through ain't shit men. Everybody isn't going through men who aren't willing to provide. Everybody's not going through that in the black community. So and especially like this whole narrative black men don't love our women and we don't care about our women and we don't protect our women. What are we what are we talking about? A lot <laughs> ninety I'm not gonna say no percentage. Majority of men love black women period a lot a majority of black men worship our black women we just are tired of feeling like you guys listen to everybody but us Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you listening to everybody but us tell you how we feel and it's like bro are y'all gonna listen or not Mm -hmm. i'm telling you what i want nine times out of ten and i'm sorry y'all again we we don't listen we don't, we don't listen or either we have it in our mind, like this whole, I don't need a man or you're going to pay me to date me. Are you going to men deal with that all the time? Like all the time. That's how we look at black men and that's how we treat them. Like for what? That's why so many of the, uh, what does it say? Good guys finish last and all this, or either they're turning to someone else or y'all get so upset. Well, all they date is black women. Why are they turning to white women? And why are they talking to Asian women? Go talk to them Asian women. They listen. Like just from interracial relationships, they actually listen. Like, I don't know why we're the ones that are just like, like, no. It's, like, we're scared to be submissive. We don't want to listen. Mm-hmm. We want everything our way. You're going to take care of me my way or no way. This, this, or that. What you bring to the table when y'all ain't bringing nothing mm-hmm. but your mouth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and one thing that I really admire about us is we don't cut each other off. Like, if you notice, though, no, on God, though, like, what, if you peep, not even just for the show, like, in real life, like, mm-hmm. when you talking, I'm actively listening when i'm talking you're actively listening unless we unless we get like super excited and don't want to forget like, oh, let me, da, 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 da. but when people are constantly talking over each other you're never going to be able to hear not even just hear understand what the person is saying because you're just waiting to respond mm-hmm. my favorite 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 quote listen to understand and stop listening to respond it takes you so much further that's why we are how we are now. At first, yes, we were two battle rams. We, was, we, were, we were still learning each other, yeah. for sure. But we were, we were once still learning. we incorporated listening to understand, hey, babe, I feel like this, like this. 
it wasn't automatically, man, what you talking about? I ain't finna. Do, do, do. Mm-hmm. It eventually got to the point where, like, all right, babe, so why you feel that way? And you could talk, and then you sit there, and you listen. Because once you get the whole thought out, because you be cutting it off, and they're not even finished explaining the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And now it's a whole nother argument because you just didn't want to listen. But yeah, that's what we just went way off topic there, didn't we? <laughs> we, we? We about to hit an hour today. We just a new record. Ooh. Damn there. Once again, we appreciate y'all. Um, for sure. How we ended sure. this one? So long. Farewell to you, my friend. Bye-bye. Goodbye for now until we meet again on Bye-bye. Tuesday. <laughs> on Thursday. On Tuesday. Dun, dun, dun. On Thursday. Dun, dun, dun. On Tuesday. Na, 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 on Thursday.